big conference weekend for the Cassis Pack we, uh, past weekend, a pair of five-set victories on the road. But what stood out to me the most was that the five-set wins were in opposite fashions. One reverse sweep and then one 2-0 lead that was recovered in the fifth. So your thoughts on both those results and on the that, that toughness that was on display? Super uh, proud of my team. Uh, they What they did on Friday uh, is no easy feat because in the first set, we beat Davenport to 24. In the second set, we were up 24-21 and we lost both of those, right? And so mentally, it's hard not to be affected by the way you lost, right? Go out, kind of push them around in the third set. Fourth set, we were down 23-19. I actually called timeout at 20-15 to and I looked into the stands and people were leaving because they assumed Davenport was about to win the match. And then they went up 23-19, and you can just feel, right? I mean, you've been a part of any sporting event. You can feel when it feels like this is overwhelming, it's going to be over soon. Uh, we didn't believe that, but you could tell everyone else believed that. Uh, and so to come back, we rattled off six straight points to win 25-23, and then that just gave us a ton of momentum going into that fifth set, and we just kind of took care of them. We got them stuck in a rotation where Haley Krieger, their, the best hitter probably in the entire conference, was stuck back row. And they were trying to get her the ball even back row, and they just she couldn't finish points. I mean, part of it is she took 70-some swings, and part of it was it's really hard to get kills from the back row. And so um, that was awesome. And then going into – they're an incredible team. Davenport, I think, personally, is probably the scariest team, maybe outside Ferris for us, just because of our results against Ferris. But, but Davenport just feels like they have the firepower, um, the coaching, the defense – to beat anybody. Uh, Grand Valley, uh, you know, took a tough loss to Tech the night before on Friday, so they came out a little flat. We got a little bit of momentum in those first two sets. Uh, and then they just started playing the way they're capable. They have probably the best athletes in the conference and what they're capable of doing. They're just not stringing together long enough to sustain for an entire match. And so again, you can't help but be proud of a team that goes and, you know, loses a third, gets kind of kicked around in the fourth, and then in the fifth set, uh, finding a way to dig deep and our, our you know assistant coach uh, coach Gonzalez she asked to talk to the team before the fifth set started and, and you could see that she had inspired them and they were fired up to play uh, and so I was really proud of them um, and how they performed this weekend and you're probably going to touch on this but the way uh, we blocked particularly Megan Meyer you know going into the weekend we were the worst blocking team and it, it incentivized us or incentivized me because in the press release, Grand Valley said as much. They said we're the worst blocking team, and they said that we are, I think the word they used was scuffling into the weekend. Uh, we were skipping out of their gym on Saturday. And, and you know, I, I'm all about bulletin board material, and I was kind of surprised that their uh, sports info people thought it was appropriate to say that about us. Um, but, you know, we went out there. We had, I think, 11 blocks against um, – Grand Valley and Megan Meyer in particular was a standout performer and, and was honored as Defensive Player of the Week as a result. And so I'm, I'm just really proud of the way they came out uh, last weekend, worked super, or last week, worked super hard in the gym to get better, and then you saw those results this weekend. Well, like you say, Coach, Megan Meyer winning Defensive Player of the Week for her performances over the weekend now is one of just two players in the conference to win both an Offensive and Defensive oh, Player of the Week award, which is obviously really cool. So what does that say, not just to how skilled and talented Megan is, but how talented your, your team is and how, how they have that ability to respond to that sort of thing where it's like, wow, you know, okay, we really suck at this, but then they came yeah. out and use that to motivate them to do better at it. You said we suck at it. <laughs> just so we're clear. Um, I can see that. Yeah, you, Megan's unique. Um, the Megan Jackie Smith thing is unique. Uh, because everyone knows they're kind of the firepower in offense. Lizzie Stark is, is in there as well. Um, but most people know when we get a good pass, Megan, if she's in the game, is probably going to get the ball. And that's really hard. And she somehow is still leading the league in, by a significant margin and hitting percentage. It shows you how smart of a hitter she is. She doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And what that does is, you know, Rain Thompson on the right side, Lizzie Stark and Jackie on the outside all benefit from people keying in on Megan. Uh, offensively. Now, it takes a special talent, as you kind of alluded to, to be somebody who can have so much firepower offensively, but also be a shutdown defender uh, at the net as well. And it's, it's just from hard work. 
Like, like I can't stress enough that she isn't just naturally this, this stud blocker. It is every day. And she is really, the way, the way that she analyzes her game and talks about her game, you can see the wheels are always turning when we're practicing and how she can get better. The changes she's trying to make. And our middles in particular um, have really, really worked super hard the last like month on their blocking and how to get in front of those hitters, slow them down. And what happens is you have this kind of domino effect where when our blockers are doing a better job, it makes our defense easier because they can see around the block. They are get, The block is slowing the ball down, so digging the ball is easier. And then you just start to develop confidence, and, and that is, in my opinion, the most powerful thing in the gym, is if a team is playing with confidence, especially one as gifted as ours, it's really hard to stop us. And that was kind of what you saw on display this weekend against two just really quality opponents. We went out there and got very difficult five set wins in their gym, which which is huge. And so I'm, I'm really excited, but I'm sure as you're transitioning to talk about, <laughs> we play here in about six hours. So there's kind of no rest at this point. Yeah. Well, like you said, coach, final road trip of the regular season is this week. It starts tonight at Michigan Tech and then downstate Saginaw Valley, Wayne State on Saturday. But of course, the task ahead is a big rivalry match at Michigan Tech. So. What is it going to take for the Cats to go in there? Because the crowd was a huge factor at home, and you'd have to imagine that it's going to be true again, just yeah. to the opposite effect for the Cats this time. Yeah, there's a lot of implications going into this uh, this week, or this match, I should say, uh, for both us and Tech. Tech, when we played them last time at home, you're right, the crowd was a huge, huge bump for us. And then Tech was not playing particularly well at that moment. They are playing well now. So, you know, we talk about confidence being the most powerful thing in my mind. They're playing with confidence right now. You know, I know they lost to Davenport, but they played them well. They beat Grand Valley on the road. Uh, they had a 2 and one weekend at the crossover. So they're playing with confidence. They're playing well. They have their team playing together. And their strengths are, you know, their, their ball control and serve receive and their defense and blocking. And so... Those are really, if you can sustain those things, right, you can beat anybody. If you can keep getting the ball off the ground, that's how you win games. Um, and so our test is going to be not getting frustrated, right? Not hitting a ball hard, getting dug, and then saying, well, now I have to hit this ball twice as hard. Otherwise, they're going to dig it again. And what that does is we did it kind of to Grand Valley. As you start to hit, make hitting errors because you're trying so hard to terminate that you're compromising control. Um, and so we have to make sure that we're staying patient on our side of the net. Uh, their right side, uh, Kazinga, is, is, is very talented. And so we're going to have to make sure we're trying to slow her down. They have a freshman outside right now who's coming into our own. Their middles are extremely talented. So if we, get them, if we allow them to be in system all night tonight, we're going to have a really tough task in front of us. And so our goals are going to be to serve them tough, which is a huge strength of ours, try to get them out of system, force them to be setting the ball outside, and even to the right side, um, which is easier to defend when you know they're gonna, what they're going to do when they're out of system. So, so trying to affect them off the serve is going to be priority one. Uh, priority two is just taking care of the ball on our side. Like I said, being patient, understanding rallies are going to be long and extended, and, and trying to walk out of there with a win. So with the two big five-set wins over the past weekend and now another really tough match ahead against a team that's playing really well, it's sure to be a very hostile environment. With two weeks left in the regular season, this is some pretty invaluable experience like we've talked about all year. The Cats, the main goal is to put yourself in a position to be playing in big matches down the stretch. It feels like this is some crucial big match experience right here. What, what kind of value does that have uh, coming up in the GLIAC tournament and just two-ish weeks? Yeah, it's, it's tremendous. I mean, I think Tech is sitting at five right now, maybe, in the conference. Five or six, I can't remember. Um, Wayne's sitting at four, I believe, Like, and, and Saginaw's playing okay. So it's this whole weekend is going to be hard, but, but let's be honest. We have five matches right now, and if we want to be playing in the big, big matches, you just have to win them, right? You can't, you can't think ahead. Like, I, I, I don't even care about Saginaw or Wayne until... 10 p.m. tonight, right? Um, but I have to be forward thinking. Coach Gonzalez has to be forward thinking and how we're preparing the team and looking at tomorrow's practice. We get practice yesterday, which we don't usually practice on Mondays this late in the season. Play today. We're going to have to practice again tomorrow, even though we're going to be exhausted. And then we hit the road on Thursday. So this last stretch, is, uh, this last month, has been really taxing on us physically, mentally. Um, but everybody's dealing with these lulls. So, so you can either use it as an excuse and, and dismiss playing poorly, or you can say, we're going to fight against this urge to want to be exhausted and tired and just say, hey, 
give me, you know, when we played Grand Valley, my messaging was, give me two hours. So don't think about the rest of the day. I said, look at this next minute in front of you, give everything you have for this next minute, and then the next minute, and then the next minute. And then when we're going into fifth set, I said, 20 minutes. Give me 20 more minutes of everything you have. And that's what you're gonna have to do because every team is dealing with this exhaustion. Every team is dealing with you know, the stresses of school coupled with wanting to be a great athletic program. Um, and you can't compromise either of them. And so you have to find a way to persevere through both of them. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, and, and the hope is that, you know, in two weeks, two weeks from tomorrow, we're hosting a GLIAC quarterfinal. Uh, and then after that, we're playing wherever the semis and finals are. Uh, then after that, we're talking about how we're prepping ourselves for the national tournament. Um, those are all things out of our control that I'm talking about. So truly, when we're in the, on the bus here at 2 o'clock, the focus is going to be how are we going to win that first point against Tech? And that's how we have to approach it. You can't be overwhelmed by who you're playing or what that means.